Hey crafters, this is Paulette. I thought I would pop in and share my Mother's Day cards for this year, 2014. I have ended up making little dish cabinet cards. This is by no means my own idea. I used to have a template and when I was getting ready to make this, I searched and searched for my template. This is the only piece I could find and it's the piece that fits right up here. Uh, you can see by that that it's a very much smaller card than what my card is. So I've had to create my own pattern because I could not remember or find the pattern that I used. Um, as a last ditch effort before I filmed my video, I looked in one last place and did find some of the templates. Here is a very fancy Hutch template, and down here in the bottom it says copyright 2005 Cynthia Snotty. So I have googled Cynthia Snotty and finally found the patterns again. They're on Split Coast Stampers, and I will put a link to that below this video and on my blog page for this post. I have not ever made this Hutch card. The one that I like to make just uses, it's rectangular. Um, and the doors just come in very much like mine. And then these little panels make it um, whatever you call that. When you put all these little um, pieces, panel pieces in here um, for like paneled wood doors. So I will give you everything you need to go and print those. Uh, Cynthia just requests that you do not use them for competition or challenges, but you can use them for any personal use as much as you want. So as I've gone along, I have made notes for myself because as you guys well know, I fly by the seat of my pants and when I come back to do this again, I will have no earthly idea what I did. So I've got to write it down. So essentially, my cards are eight and a half by 11. So this is the 11 and this is the eight and a half. And I came in here and I scored at two and three quarters and eight and one fourth. Then I took an extra piece of cardstock in the same color and I cut all of these trim pieces and my little shelves inside. They are all three eighths of an inch wide. Now for these on the front, we're very easy because they're the eight and a half inch length. So I just put the cardstock in my trimmer that way and cut three eighths inch four times. And then I believe for this piece, you can do it again, one, two, three, four, five times. Cut these long pieces down to five and three eighths inches, which is just a little bit short, but you've got the score is there pressed to the inside. So I think it's okay. When you look at it overall, I don't think it matters that they're a little short on each side. They're sponged to be darker, and I think that's what pops when people look at it. And then with that little extra piece that you have left over, you can get these pieces here, which are two and three quarter inches long, and you need four of those. When I made the first card, which was the green one, I did not get my corners lined up and they are absolutely horrible. So my apologies to whoever gets the green card. Um, after I got to the second card, I figured out that I could lay these pieces on top of each other. Just go ahead and glue them on top of each other and then take my tiny, very pointy scissors and sneak it under those, those little three eighths inch pieces and cut from the very tip of this corner to the very inside of that corner. And then you have to dig off and out from under those two little pieces of triangle that are left and that gives you the perfect flush corner for your miters. And so that turned out pretty good. This is a penny black stamp that I used for this wood grain. Now I was able to match this one up pretty decently. I did a horrible job on this one. So I might should come back and try to insert some wood panels. That would cover a lot of that up. I could even take a marker and well I might just try that. 
I have some Crayola washable markers and they are very close to the colors of my Stampin' Up! ink so I could come in and maybe just get those to meet because you know this card is very not noticeable opposed to all the gaps on this card. So I want to walk you through the plates. The most laborsome part of this card is punching all of the plates and doing all of this sponging that has to go around the edge of each item and all of these little strips that are the edging and the shelving inside the card. So if you have arthritis or tennis elbow or anything like that, maybe do it in stages. It took me about four days to complete these cards. And I mean, I didn't sit in my craft studio all day, maybe half a day for four days, and got, got them done. So I'll walk you through how to make the plates. I did use some other dies as well. Go through your stash and see what you have. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some things that are other things that you can turn into other things. So... Let's go through all of the plate measurements because I know everybody will want to know that. So let's start with the dessert plate. It's a 5 8 inch circle and a 1 inch circle to create that. The medium plate is a 3 quarter inch circle and a 1 inch circle. The dinner plate is a 1 inch circle and a 1 and 1 half inch circle punch. The large round platter is a one and one quarter inch circle and a one and three quarter inch circle punch. The oval platter, I only have two smooth ovals. I do have one, well, maybe two scalloped ovals, but they wouldn't work together. So I used these two that I have, the one and one quarter inch oval and the two inch oval. Uh, these two vases here are from a Quick Cuts die from the Flirt set. This goblet is a Quick Cuts die. This teapot is from a Spellbinders die set that has this oriental pot and a very feminine pot with matching cups for both pots. My punch bowl is a one and three quarter inch circle punch. My punch cups are a one half inch circle punch. I did have to insert that and almost cut the whole circle. If it's easier, cut the whole circle. I felt like I could get my levelness by just inserting it as far as I needed it um, and punching that way and then trim just a little bit off the bottom. I used a 3 8 inch circle punch as the handle. I did doodle on those a little bit with a Bic Market alcohol marker. For the punch bowl, it was the 1 and 3 quarter inch circle punch. I trimmed a little bit off the bottom. Um, the top was just, you know, I only inserted it so far, so that was already a cut edge. I did cut tiny little slivers of cardstock to glue along there and the bottom just to kind of give that reference of the rolled edge and the base of the bowl. Probably not necessary though. Um, the little salad bowls are a one inch circle punch and I only inserted that part way. I'll show you how I do that when I teach you how to do the plates. These faceted glasses are actually a quick cuts die that is a sandcastle die and it's to be used this way and as soon as I saw that die I was like those are glasses so just flip them the other way. This is a quick cuts die and I will show you all of the dies as well. So let's look at how to make the plates because I know you're dying to know that. So you have to punch three times to get your plates. So let's do that. I've got a one inch and a one and a one half inch. You do kind of have to experiment um, with the circle dies that you have and see which ones will work together. So you're going to take your smaller one first and you want to make sure that you have enough area of cardstock all the way around this because you're going to be punching over this. So punch that. If you're doing dishes that are all the same color, save this. This is the backer piece for the dessert bowl. I'll lay it there so you can see that. So save that, and then all you need to do is create the rim to glue on top of that. So we've got that smaller punch. Then we're going to take our bigger punch and just center it on top of that. Try to line it up as best you can and punch that. 
That's the rim of our plate. And then you're going to move over and punch one more for the back of the plate. Let's do the bowl while we're here before I lay this paper down. So you're just going to insert that however tall you want your bowl and give that a punch. And it went flying. Okay, it's on my shoe. So here is your bowl. And for the one that is going to be on the very bottom. I just like to cut a little piece off of the bottom. That way it looks like it's sitting. And then the ones that go inside it do not have to be trimmed because they all fit right behind that one that's sitting on the bottom. So take an ink color that's a little bit darker than your cardstock. And just sponge this rim. It makes all the difference in the world and gives you that great dimension of a real plate. You know, a lot of the dinner plates have that indentation down into the middle of the plate. And then use whatever glue you like. These pin glues are great for this small area. And, you know, during the whole construction of my card, I was picking that up and laying it on here. And the easiest way is to lay this right on top of that. Pick it up pretty quick so you can push on all edges to make sure it's flush. I did have some plates that were off a little bit. So don't throw those away. Let me close this ink pad before I get it in the back of my cards. Don't throw those away, just put them in the back and then have another plate come over here and cover this. I put the plates that were in the distance a little higher up on the shelf and then the plates that were in front a little farther down. Can you see the height difference here? So just to make them look, you know, more, more stacked in and layered in. The way to figure out, because you glue down these two plates first, or two cups first, and then to figure out exactly where to put the adhesive, because I really want the adhesive here and here, I just laid these on top of here and used my ATG to make two swipes of adhesive right there where those rims are, and then I could just turn this over and stick it down. So if you were doing, you know, plates in the back, I did them both ways. You know, three in the back and two in the front, or two in the back and three in the front. You know, just mix it up. I got really bored, so I just kind of flipped, flipped around back and forth. This purple card is for my mom. She loves purple. We both love frosted glass. We have a lot of that Tierra glass. Gosh, what was that? I don't know. 25 years ago. Uh, that we ordered that, and we have that in our dish cabinets. Actually, mine are still in the attic, I think. But she has an antique purse that is a couple of generations old, two or three generations old. And it's a little metal purse. It almost, I want to say it's crocheted, but it's not. When you first look at it, it kind of looks like it's crocheted. I think it is, it's like little diamonds that had... Um, little feet all the way around it and then they crimp and attach to rings and and so it's very it's very fluid and very uh, flexible so she'll know what that is she has that in her dish cabinet and we love teapots so so that's really fun I also put the Tim Holtz easel die on here with some very simple instructions. I also made a template so I could trim this because this die comes all the way down here and I didn't want that to show through the front of my card. So, and I didn't want people to have confusion with this. This only works one way. So I put the instructions on here so people can set that up right away. So here's the green card. This is that same little quick cuts ice cream 
die. This is the cuddle bug cake die. I like to take the body of the cake and make a cake stand out of it. I just punched an extra circle with my handheld 1 8 inch punch to make a little knob for the top. And it just, they just turn out so cute. Now, I was getting really bored by the time I was down here to the end, so I just started mixing it up. This is that little Spellbinders watering can, and I cut the spout off of it. I think it makes a lovely tall pitcher. And just, there's that little oriental teapot, because when you cut the whole die, you get a fancy teapot in the oriental one, and you get one cup, so you have to go back and cut additional cups. By the time I got to this card, this was the last one, I was tired of doing the mitered corners and fiddling with that. So I just glued my long strips down and my little strips down here. Um, obviously, mitered corners are very fancy, but I think there is absolutely nothing wrong with that cabinet. And I was so bored that I made a punch bowl and it should have been a little bit taller. I may have to come back in and redo that. Um... And then my little punch cups. I was so tempted to draw S hooks on here, but because I put that extra little layer of cardstock on the rim, I was afraid that that would interfere with my marking the S. So, but these would look so darling. I laid them on top of there to begin with, but I could do less things here by stacking the cups out to the side. These are Quick Cuts Flirt Die, two little vases to go in there, and I just think those turned out really fun. So let's go through the dies. You know, when I get ready to make a project like this, I just go and pull dies from every storage area that I have them because they're not all in the same place. I've got some in the iris containers. I've got some in baskets. And so I just go and pull what I think, and then I nix you know, bring it to my work counter, nix immediately what I know I don't want. So here's the little ice cream cup. I cut a bunch of straws. I was so tempted to have them sticking out, but they were so small. And my hands were so tired, I just nixed those. The little water pitcher. The goblet, which is really too big. You know, if you look at it next to the water pitcher, it is too big. But, you know, putting it, putting them on the top in the cards that got them... On the top and putting the water pitcher on the bottom I think overall it, it's okay it works this is actually um, the Easter basket die from quick cuts the it's a two die the other die has the handle and the egg this is the bottom of the basket sometimes I use this for a salad bowl you know the napkin you cut that and then lay it here it points down on the front here is a lovely thing this is a boss cut die. It's just like the quick cuts die, only it has ejection foam on it. And sometimes I will use this. It's like a pasta bowl, and I will stack it up like the other little bowls. And then here is the cuddle bug cake die. This is actually the body of the cake. This is a two die set as well. The other die has the little frosting and the candle. And I just like to make a cake stand out of this. We all have them. And so I love that. This is an oven crock. You know, before we had crock pots that plug in, our grandmothers used these ceramic crocks in the oven. And this one has feet, so I ended up not using it. Um, if I did use it, I was going to cut the feet off because I feel like it's very, um, you know, in the past. So to update it, I would have cut the feet off. Um, here's a little coffee pot. I was tempted to use it, you know, but it's a scrapping cottage die. I didn't use it. I felt like it wasn't feminine enough. And here is a die that I really debated using by Quick Cuts. A little basket. Three of them would have fit perfectly down here, but I felt like that would have been a little bit boring. And I just wanted to keep it very plate, very plate dish worthy. So, but you know, use what you have. Um, you know, there's by no means any rules. Here is that flirt die with the two little vases. Um, one thing I thought was interesting is you could flip this vase upside down and it would be a whole nother shape. So I like that. Don't forget to look at your dies that way. Here's that little purse. So cute. 
Lady Boot and shoe number one. Um, there are shoe vases. Well, that die's gone. There are shoe vases, so you could have used the boots for a vase, too. People have stuff like that in their dish cabinets. Here is that Spellbinders watering can. I just snip this off. After I die cut it, I just use my scissors and just roll right up the side there and cut that off. I think it makes a lovely picture. Um, I really should not have used my Bic Market through the holes. Um, it really messed up my Bic Market. And it didn't turn out very pretty either. I have also used this spade cut the end off here and cut these little tips off right here and narrow the handle a little bit and made that into a spatula so you could always do you know something like that if you need that kind of application here's that lovely little teapot the little oriental teapot and the very fun teapot with their little cups this one's called tea time and then here is the quick cuts relax set here is this little piece of the sand castle. It probably goes this way. This, oh my gosh, those foam things are going to drive me to drinking. That was there and now it has evaporated. This little long piece is either stuck to me or it's in the bathroom because when I was in the bathroom, it was in my hair. Oh my gosh. So, anyway. Uh, I use these as those little faceted glasses. I just turned them upside down and doodled on them to make them the faceted glasses. This little exotic drink, I was so tempted to use it as well. These would make great little salad bowls. This would make a vase, even though the cup is too big to use as a cup. Um, but these would be great, great to use. You might could even, I don't know, you could trim... Don't be afraid to trim on things as well. You could trim on things. You could have even, uh, I probably could have used that little umbrella. Oh, there is one piece. I'm telling you, they just flit and fly around. Oh my goodness. Every time I open this, half of them are out, out of the dies. Okay. So, I guess there's not really probably anything else here that could be used. Hmm. That would be that would be a nice little piece of French bread, wouldn't it? So, ooh, we could make a bowl out of the body of that if you didn't have the right circle punch. Gosh, that's a nice oval, you know? People are doing little oval tags on things all the time. That would be great. I was thinking this turtle body would make a nice platter if you come in and cut the other edge off. Wouldn't that make a nice platter as well? So be sure and look at all of your dies and see what you can get out of them. I even had this die, which is a cuddle bug die that already had the plate on it. But I didn't even think about that, and it would have been one piece. I would have had to try to mask the center, and this is a little bit bigger than the one or the one and a quarter inch punch. I believe it's a little bit bigger than the one inch punch. But, oh, and look, there's some little napkins. I could have put those inside my dish cabinet, too. So, anyway, I thought these were pretty fun. They were very labor-intensive. If you guys have any questions, be sure and let me know. I will put links to Cindy Snotty's blog, and you can go and check out how she made her cards. Thanks for watching, and happy Mother's Day!